tempo research will be the foundation forever. I mean, there is nothing more important in the decision for a performer to just, you know, pick a tempo. Um, people don't realize, and even not musicians, um, sometimes surprisingly don't realize that they think tempo is the end result and it's something that fits to them or they're just personal, but it's not. It's just it's just a result of all the parameters. But when you don't when you not start from reconstructing the tempo, or when your intention is not first and foremost before you even dive into anything else, like what is the notation telling me in terms of tempo, then what you do actually what you actually do is reverse the process and just play through the piece, develop a kind of taste, but you develop also, you adapt your tempo towards to what the notes without a foundation, without the blueprint actually of the composition is telling you. And that's that's a mistake I see so often. It's not a mistake. I mean, if you enjoy that process, by all means. But of course, when somebody comes then and say like, okay, but let's now check what the composer possibly had in mind, then of course, I can imagine that it's an emotional reaction or response oftentimes. So how dare you question my tempo, tempo something personal. And if Beethoven would just come back and you know, and you know the story. Um, the reverse, however, is what you should do. You should just, just first start with trying to understand um, the uh, the notation and see what the tempo, uh, you know, what kind of possible, you know, margins or just frame you would uh, be able to reconstruct for your own interpretation. And from there you work in all the other layers. And you will see that the character of the piece develops in a different way, actually. It's it's fascinating. It's it's sometimes surprising to me as well why people struggle so much or if people have so much difficulties in just, uh, you know, um, <laughs> I would say um, taking that position because it's really fun when you take the metronome, you know the story. And you 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 just uh, have a number that the composer wrote on the score, have it published even. And I know in single beat reading or modern way of reading, these numbers make no sense. That's the reason why we disregard them anyways, unless you, of course, bring them up and then, then suddenly they are important. But I mean, you know what I mean? They're, they're just too fast. But in whole beat, it's possible. You can just work with them. And, and granted, yes, there the result will be a little different than you all, um, you know, um, expected or uh, had in mind or know the music and that's what it is that's why historically informed performance practice should always come with an element of surprise because guess what it's been 200 sometimes 300 years ago when these people actually wrote those um, that music so how surprising is it that when you reconstruct that or when you come close to that we think this tempo research potentially can do. We can never reconstruct Beethoven's playing, never reconstruct Chopin's playing, never reconstruct Brahms playing. I mean, it's, it's, it's too far gone. I mean, maybe when we really are honest in our bit to ourselves and build these layers up and layers and upon layers, and we're all in this together, we all experiment with one goal. It's not about me. It's not about showing my virtuosity. It's about bringing the message of Chopin to the surface or Beethoven. Then at the end, we might come closer. But tempo is just the first fact. And so, all to say, notation leads to that, and I will make series and just uh, you know talking to, through scores and, and and what have you, in order to um, give you my process and hopefully helping you.